15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mike Rasheed. And Party Tour Body. <laughs> and this is Lions, Owls, Elephants podcast. And what's up, Sean? What's up? It is a Thursday. Shit's happening. It's all kind of shit's happening. Yeah. It's Thursday, but y'all ain't going to see this on Thursday. So, yeah. you know. Anyway, um, I was looking in the news, and there's a whole bunch of shit going on. Um, a lot of weird stuff. But... I want to get to like the Jake Paul because I am calling him out. I want to fight him. Official? It's official. Listen, Jake Paul, if you're listening, and this goes out to other YouTubers out there on the platform who can get the word out, right? Um, Philip DeFranco, he covers a lot of topics, a lot of issues. Put this out there, Casey Neistat. We text about this. Uh, whomever, uh, David Dobrik, anybody. I know he don't really do that. PewDiePie. <laughs> Fucking I'm calling PewDiePie. Everybody. Everybody. Listen, get the word out there so Jake don't have an excuse. KSI, get the word out there. I'm challenging Jake Paul. Jake Paul is 3-0. and I'm 1-0. and I'm challenging him to a professional boxing match or an exhibition, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm willing to put up a million dollars of my own money, and I'm asking him to do the same. When it takes all. Or we can negotiate whatever, you know, but I'm willing to do that. That's a $2 million pot. Um, you know, I was looking at, I was reading the numbers. He hasn't received that for a fight. Uh, he, he got a little little under 700000 for sparking Ben Askren. So you can potentially double, double up, right? More than double with your biggest payday. And it's like the motivation to train hard to win should be great for that big pot. Think about how exhilarating it'll be for the people watching, knowing that the loser gets nothing. Right. Nothing. Yeah. It puts a huge sense of urgency on myself and on him to rise, to ascend. I think a lot of times with the casual fan, when we look at boxing matches, we, we look at the two opponents and we size them up next to each other. And this would be the first time that even forget about skill, put skill aside, where he's matched up with someone who looks like they should be fighting him. Right. He fought a little guy uh, in Nate Robinson, mm -hmm. and then he fought a guy who is completely not a boxer. Uh, and he ben doesn't Askren. even he doesn't even have a dad bod. He, he has a he has a milk he has a milk carton bod. The auntie body. Yeah. Aunt bod. Yeah. So and here's the thing. I know a lot of y'all. Oh, you're way too big for Jake. <clears throat> nah, 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 nah. The man probably walks around at 220. He, he just fought at 200. He had to come down to make weight. I walk around at 215. He might be heavier than me because yeah. he's tall and he has, he has some good muscle, muscle uh, tone on him. And he's in shape. He's a beast. He's an athlete. I respect the dude. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you one thing. Yeah, you can't outdo me in. You can't outdo me in with these. He likes to talk shit. He made Floyd look stupid. That ain't happening with me. It's not gonna happen. I think too good for you, player. But uh, yeah, let's run it. It'll be fun, fuck it. It'll be an experience, you know? I think people will wanna see it. I think they wanna see it. People are like, oh, well, he has more followers than you. Like, so what? It doesn't matter, I got a lot of followers. I got, you know, over a million followers here on YouTube, a couple million on Facebook, a little over a million on Instagram, you know? Hefty on Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. Bring them, bring them all. You know what I mean? A captive audience, right? It's a lot of money to be made. So we should run it, you know? Um, he can't, you can't rob the bank but for so long, right? Three's enough. Let's fight. You know what I'm saying? I only got one fight. That's it. I already heard about, we, we, he came up this morning, the challenge that was issued to him 
for fighting a champion of some sort in exchange for if he loses, he can't fight again. I don't know how valid that yeah, is. Yeah, kind of sounds like a weird thing to offer as a. Yeah. It seems like that would come Which from. Stops you yeah. From you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a strange, strange set of circumstances to offer someone, but um, this is a legitimate opportunity for him to step up and prove himself against a boxer who claims to be a boxer who is a boxer who has boxed, but is roughly speaking of a similar pro experience level. So it makes a I lot mean, of sense. He has more experience, pro yeah. experience than I do. You know, and he listen, he's been tra- training consistently for about three or so years. So, listen, there's guys that I know that move around in there with him, and they say he's decent. He got some pop. He's athletic. He got a heart. That's what I like to hear. I'm not even considering his brother, Logan, because Logan is terrible. I mean, it is what it is. His hands suck. But um, but if he want, if he want these hands, I'll bless him. You know what I'm saying? I'll baptize him with the hands of God. Your arms are too short to box with God. Remember that. But why am I doing this? For money. People forget that boxing is is a is a form of entertainment, but it's called prize fighting. You're not doing it for the love. It's not for the love of violence. That would be weird, right? I want to fight just to fight. I don't want to fight nobody. But for that kind of bag, I want to do it. I would love to do it. So there's not many people I would turn down a $2 million dollar payday for you know what i'm saying so and you know let's call it what it is he's huge on youtube i'm okay on youtube right but i'm not because i know people try to thought oh you just want clout yes i do i do want to increase my my uh visibility on youtube i think that'll help me yeah you know, we I don't mean, have I don't to, think I know it will. We don't have to beat around the bush about the intentions. Yeah, it's, to, yeah. it's to grow uh, yourself and our businesses. And there's monetary gain is everything like yeah. none. And none of it is centered around the love for fighting. It's, but I do love boxing. Yeah. The sport of boxing. And you, it's it. been a part of your life for, for since you were a kid mm-hmm. and uh, having a great opportunity and a reason to, to lace them up again mm-hmm. is uh, is awesome. And this right. is it. See, I don't, I don't even have the disdain, the hatred for him that a lot of people do. Yeah. I hear a lot of sentiments about the guy, and they hate him. I'm like, I don't see what's the big deal. He's a kid, you know, having a, the time of his life, fucking with people. I think they're all washed up. You, people who, you know. who hating on him is washed up people. No, nah, I don't think that. It's some, think, it's some decent people that I know that don't like him. See, I don't know. In the fighting world or, or nah, just, just celebrity? Period. But I mean, period. like, when I hear fighters talking about him, mad that he's fighting, I think they're really just mad at the idea that someone is able to come in and get ascend faster than what they had to go through. Yeah. And there's some they jealousy should, to that. They should, I wouldn't call them washed up, but they should get over that because it's a new new day. And boxing is, like I said, it's entertainment. So you got to be entertaining. You got to sell yourself. You got to sell the fight. You got to market yourself, you know? So maybe some of these guys will take note and, and listen and learn. So... I mean, he's doing, he's taking a page out of Floyd Mayweather, who took a page out of Muhammad Ali, who took a page out of Sugar Ray Robinson, self-promotion, and sometimes making people hate you is the best form of promotion. I mean, think about the news and the media. They they sell fear and hatred and division to get people to tune in. People tune in. The ratings be be in the sky, you know, so... So that's a thing. That's a that's a tactic. I don't, I don't choose to employ that tactic. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate just on GP because I already do. But I'm not gonna act ugly just to get hate. You know what I'm saying? It spreads a lot faster. Negativity does. Yeah. Than, than pot. It's like look at this guy. He's so awesome and upstanding of a guy. That doesn't really happen as much as look at this guy. He's such but an asshole. We can asshole. make it. We can. We can. I feel like the narrative can be hijacked and redirected into something more positive because, you know, I feel like. Yeah, you're right. The negativity do spread faster, but making people aware of they're attaching themselves to some negative bullshit. Like, why are you why are you attracted to that? It gives them a little bit of self awareness to be like, yeah, you're right. And I tell you all the time, like, being mindful of the new, the the mental nutrition, the things that we consume, visually, aud- audibly, you know, content. If it's filth, is is filling our brains with filth, our minds with filth. It's staying on your brain. Putting is a think about how many people stay in this perpetual state of anger, 
towards the government for COVID and all of this shit, right? They're always, all the posts are mad or angry. They probably giving that energy to people around them. You know what I'm saying? It probably affects their daily lives. I'm not with that. So, all right, so check it out. So we got some issues going on in the world. One really big issue is Palestine and Israel. What do you know about it and what are your thoughts on it? Well, we, what I know about it, and you know, it's like a gathering of, of pieces of information from this side of the world, you know, uh, it'd be much different, I'm sure, if you were there. Um, you'd have a little bit more accurate of a, of a story because the narrative that is painted about countries that we don't live in is always off base. I know that from experience of what's talked about how things are in, in Iran, where I've been mm -hmm. and where I have family at to tell me what's really going on right. is not always accurate. So I, I take everything with a, with a grain of salt um, and assume that there's some interests and the people who are feeding information have some interests. But what I'm aware of is the fact that there are two groups of people um, claiming and, and wanting to live in a very similar geographic location. Mm -hmm. One of these groups of people, the Palestinians, have been there for quite some time. And one of these groups of people, the uh, Israeli people, uh, feel Jewish. that the, the, the Jewish people, yeah. but, but I guess the state of Israel, okay. um, feel that they have a, a claim to it that supersedes the Palestinian right to be there. Though they mm -hmm. both have been there in some form, uh, shape or form, it was called Palestine. Now it's like, it's not even on the map. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wild. And it's I remember wild. the day that that happened and you look it up, you type in Palestine on Google Maps Not and there. it goes to Israel. It's, yeah. it's pretty wild. So yeah. you have people who used to occupy an entire area, have been relegated to a very small area. And even that small area is now under attack and, and being um, consistently being bombarded. Moved out of their homes. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, so it's a, it's a very, very tense situation. Mm -hmm. So, Elijah, can you pull up? When did Israel, how can I word this? When did, because I, I believe it was in the 1900s when the Palestinians were displaced and that land, Palestine became Israel. The first time it ever happened? Right. Yeah. First of all, shout out young Elijah. Young Elijah. Fact checking. Um, it says 1948. Okay, so. Shortly wow. after World War II. 1948. Was it? Let me, can I see that, please? If I'm not mistaken, the United States and United Kingdom. Okay, the history of the Israeli-Palestine, Palestinian conflict began with the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. The conflict came from intercommunal violence and mandatory, Pal mandatory Palestine between Israelis and Arabs. Um, let me see. All right, so... This is what I want to know. Why did Israel become, no, why did Palestine, no, Israel, um, you got you to gotta ask the right questions to get the right answers. Okay, so here's a timeline of the conflict. All right, so. The struggle between Israelis and Palestinians is one of the world's most enduring conflicts with the Israeli, this is on um, Wikipedia, with the Israeli uh, occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip reaching 54 years, various attempts, blah, 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 blah. So what I want to understand is why, when that happened in 48, why did that happen, right? Um, it, it seems, let me see, mandate of Palestine. It seems, you know, the British government establishment in Palestine, they, the British government established in Palestine a national home for Jewish people. Tensions grew, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's understandable why tensions would grow. Um, yeah, so United States and United Kingdom helped make that deal to where what we know as Palestine became Israel, right? And But it started with just a small part. Right. Of and Palestine. It grew. it grew. Yeah. And it seems like it happened uh very much so right after World War Two. It's right. like the 
the world's um, attention and care for the plight and struggle of the Jewish people um, was super elevated by what happened in World War II uh, by the Holocaust. And it, it created probably a platform for a lot of sympathy um, to towards the cause, which was to to get back a piece of this homeland. And then from there, it seems to have grown. Right. So do you know the reason why that there was justification for Israel to get that land? And this, listen, anyone out there who is of Jewish descent, Israeli descent, this is not, I'm not taking sides by any means. I'm asking questions out of my ignorance because I don't know. I know a little bit um, just from reading, but I haven't had a, a real like sit down with any of my Jewish friends to ask them their their side. But just from what I read, it didn't seem it didn't seem valid. It didn't seem cool. But do you understand? Yeah, I think I think hearing the perspective from someone who um, who really feels like they have a command over the subject uh, from the perspective of of Israel uh, mm -hmm. or the Jewish people would be awesome for us to have. But from what we can, what I can discern, it's that it was a, a claim based on prior occupation mm. bef that, that they believe superseded or, or I'm sorry, preceded uh, when Palestine was there or when anyone else was there. And so it was like, it, it was just from their perspective, a correction of a wrong that was done a long time ago and they a returning of, of that land to them that should be theirs. Who was it, the Ottoman Empire? Who 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 moved is Israel or I I actually don't know the answer. Um, but whoever it did, whoever did do that, you know, there could be an argument made that at that point in time, that's the end of that occupation. Um, that we wouldn't go around restructuring the world based on who used what to. happened in the history of things. Otherwise, right. you know, we have a lot of Native American people that we should be. Um, very wary of uh, of returning their things to them. Uh, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense with the logic of how the rest of the world runs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the claim is that that is the birthplace of the Jewish people and also of Christianity. Um, I mean, if it's the birthplace of Judaism and Christianity, it's got to be the birthplace of Islam as well because they all come from one lineage, right? Um, which is all in the Old Testament. All of the books are based on that, right? That's their foundation. Um, so prior to the Ottoman invasion, this was like a, a biblical or religious right. Um, okay. So this is what I don't understand. There's, I listen to, I don't speak, I just listen. I go in Clubhouse a lot and I listen to the rooms when they're discussing it. And, you know, I listen to, you know, a guy, a Middle Eastern guy, you know, several times they're asking like, well, why do you feel like this is your land, right? And it, they brought up what you brought up. Well, it, we was there 3,000 years ago. And I don't, that can't be a valid explanation, right? Because... Native Amer what if Native Americans regained power and just start wiping people out of their, moving people out of their homes all over America? I'm like, yep, well, this was ours a few hundred years ago. Yeah, much you know more recently. Way more recent. So, and the guy was telling the, um, the Jewish uh, fellow was telling the Muslim fellow that like, hey, no, the guy wasn't even Muslim. He was just Middle Eastern because he's like, I'm not religious, so I don't care about the Bible stuff or whatever. So he was like... The guy was like, look, I, I understand your concerns, but these are ours. We just got to work it out. But he's not addressing, like, this is our, why do you feel like this is your land now? You know what I mean? And I don't know, what do you think about the religious claims? Yeah, I think religion's important. I think mm -hmm. it's highly valued in a lot of different parts of the world. But I don't think, I think we had it right. Um, if there's something that, that, the founding fathers nailed it was the separation between church, church and state, and, state. Um, and although the line does get blurred sometimes because like there's christian values written into our laws uh, right. many times however the idea that the church and the state are separate is a thing i think it's and i think it's the right, right. thing yeah. because you it's unlikely to have any one nation 
that is 100% adherent to any one religion. So you don't want to have religion dictate life. You want to have each person be able to choose that type of thing. Ideally, in a, in a society like ours anyway, you know, not all societies run that way. Mm-hmm. And it's not really for us to say what's right and wrong. But I like the separation. And I don't think that the world should be having to adhere to any um, stories or, or opinions of a religion as a means of deciding who should be and who shouldn't be in certain places. Yeah, I agree with you. That, oh, our religion says that we should be here, so we mm-hmm. should be here. That doesn't really hold up to me. Yeah, and this is a discussion I would like to I would like to formally invite uh, Eric Weinstein. Um, we've tried to coordinate, uh, but when it comes to scheduling, there's no response. So, Mr. Weinstein, my dear friend, I would love to have you on so we can maybe I can get your perspective um, on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict from a historical uh, position. And well, maybe you don't even want to talk about it, and that's fine. That's fair, too. You know, I can imagine that's uh, exhausting to talk about. But, um, but I'm really curious because, you know, there's a lot of perspectives that's not even spoken about as far as who feels claim to that part of the Bible of that chosen 400 years bondage you know it's a lot there's there's not just uh jews now but that take claim to that and that's something i would like to you know open up discussion with um someone of jewish descent so i can really understand their position on it and i would like to propose a different perspective that i hear no one talking about you know yeah it's a tough one because uh, it'd be one thing if it was just two countries that were in another part of the world going back and forth over land they felt was one of the other countries, and the border changed because one country took it from another one. I mean, that's we don't deal with that as much now because we live in a very peaceful time, relatively speaking, but that shit was it's, happening. It's happening there. Yeah, but I'm of. saying that, but that shit was happening. It's been happening forever. Yeah, it happens. Uh, but, but what the difference is here is that the U.S. is involved. We're involved behind the scenes and and right. in front of the scenes yeah. because this is an ally of ours. So we're mm-hmm. we're kind of helping it to happen. And I don't know that most people are, would be okay with that. And right. it'd be like if those two countries figured it out on their own. Right. Um, if one of them goes in there and takes it, it is what it is. What, what's interesting is that you know, relatively speaking, Israel is in a more power position, powerful position than Palestine by leaps and bounds, right? You hear Hamas, 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 but Hamas is not Palestine, right? And I've heard other perspectives that it wouldn't be difficult for Israel to wipe Hamas off the map, but it helps serve a purpose uh, or an agenda. Oh, look at how violent they are. We got to keep them in check. We got to keep pushing them back further. I don't know how accurate that is, but I've heard that several times from people um, with a little bit more insight than I have on the situation. Uh, Yeah, so it seems like it's just a weird situation, man. Like, it looks like people are getting bullied, you know, honestly. This is what it looks like. I don't know, right? Maybe I got some information I don't, I'm not privy to, but I don't know. It, It doesn't look fair. And we're helping the bigger guy, you know, and I'm really curious as to every I don't know if you notice this, but whenever someone is running for president, they got to be pro Israel. Right. That's a big talking point. You know, Um, I'm curious of where that came from. Like, when did that become uh, a staple piece of American uh, loyalty? You know, because there's no pro Ghana or Nigeria or Angola or Congo. You know what I'm saying? The Congo had a Holocaust as well. You know, 10 million people were were slaughtered by Leopold, you know, in Belgium. There's no pro any of that, you know, and I'm not knocking pro Israel. I don't know. I just don't know where it comes from. Um, But I do notice that every presidential candidate got a show their allegiance to Israel. And this is just a, once again, a question out of pure ignorance. I would like to know. So I'm openly inviting any of my Jewish brothers and sisters 
to come on and enlighten us, educate us, you know, because I'd really like to know. Yeah, I think it'd be a pleasure to learn more about and uh, it'd be very insightful to hear it from someone who has that perspective, but is it, but could hopefully offer a lot of good insight because I can see that there's probably a whole generation of people who are in Israel or and or Palestine right now who've been indoctrinated and raised that this is the truth or that's the truth, but they're, that's just all emotional. Uh, but see, here's the thing. It would be good to hear that, too. I, re- I want to see what people are really hanging their hats up on, right? right. Sometimes people are hanging their hats on, up on something that's not even solid, even from an outside perspective. That's what I'm thinking know? is the case for a lot of people, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm, af- I'm afraid of is that, that someone's like, this is just, well, why do you feel this way? It's just what we've been it told. Written. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's what's in the book, right. or it's what my parents told me, and that's not... That that's not going to do anything to to sway our our position, because mm-hmm. um, that's not our book or our our belief system that we were raised with. Right. Um, but perhaps there are some legal or other um, grounds for why this is happening that we don't know about. Mm-hmm. That that I would like to learn if there is, if yeah. there is. Right. Yeah. So would I. Um, uh, one last thing. Uh, there's a term. We don't have unidentified flying objects. Now we have unidentifiable transmedium vehicles. Transmedium meaning it can exist or travel in different mediums of atmosphere or textures like air to water, no destruction. Air to land to water? Not land. They didn't say it came on land, but air and water. And there's another video released and I didn't see the video or it just looks very blurry and but they say you could hear the splashing of the water going in and out the water they can't find any wreckage submarines went to locate it mm. obama came on tv like yeah i can't talk about too much but yeah there's something out there we found some things you know so i didn't know he ever came on tv and said yeah that. this was like the other day oh okay it was recently so they still have him talking Huh? Yeah. They still have him talking? Yeah, man, he, he stays. Yeah. So that's interesting. Have you heard any, any of this stuff? No, I mean, I, I remember when they confirmed the UFOs. That, and what, what that means, people, it doesn't mean, oh, we is aliens. It means there are, we have confirmed that there are unidentified flying objects. Objects that we don't know what it is. So you can't say it's an alien because we yeah. don't know. The nature of a UFO is, is unidentified. We don't yeah, know. We don't know. Which is interesting. Now, do you believe it? That it's aliens? No, that they, they that have something. Un- that there are unidentified flying objects? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would 100% believe it because mm-hmm. we don't know. Even let's just say if it wasn't uh, something from another planet or not of this earth, mm-hmm. uh, this earth that we live on. Um, if it wasn't that, it could still just easily be new technology that Russia or China or another mm-hmm. country has that we are not aware of yet right why couldn't that happen? that that seems like super likely that Correct. they would have something that we don't have right yeah i don't really believe it unless i see it myself because i don't believe anything it's hard to believe things uh like when willie was on here we're talking about flat earth round earth when i when i really thought about it, i'm like i don't know how can i know anything i was watching a program and it was talking about how maps are not accurate how they make certain countries bigger than others. Right. That's not scale. That's not true scale. And it's for certain reasons, for perception. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you're right. It'd be no way for me to know how big a country is yeah. other than what you tell me. So I don't, I don't know. And if you, uh, if anyone has any desire to follow up on that, you can go on YouTube and see that they'll show the globe and how it looks versus what space images depict mm-hmm. and you they, you can kind of see the scale being way off right of how that of how the map is made and it's usually relative where to where the country that it was from right is. like yeah the people that's they make themselves and their allies more m- more sizable and Bigger, shrink down right. the other the other countries it's right. kind of hilarious yeah it's kind of like when we uh when we made the classification system for what was first second and third world countries it was just like based on who was our allies and, right. and who we liked and then who we didn't like was the it's third so, world country. So such a disrespectful. I thought this whole time, you know, that there was like 
specific parameters for like a power grid or sanitation or a transportation system. Mm -hmm. No, it's just based on who we like and don't like. It is. And then here's the thing. All of those things can be degraded if we don't like them just by embargoes and telling other people don't do business with these people, don't export from them, you know, or import. So right. it's a cold world, man. Yeah, it's a cold world, but it's not bleak. Um, life is good for me. Right. So I'm not one of those. I'm not a doomsday guy. Uh, is not the end of the world by any means. Every day is a day closer to the end of the world for everybody. But I don't have this super negative uh, worldview um, or for my world, put it like that. You know, I think for me, life is pretty good. Are there issues? Absolutely. Absolutely. But my life is good. You know, do other issues... Uh, resonate with me and sit on my heart absolutely that as well and um, you know it's just a matter of me educating myself properly to have a real solid um, and rational position on whatever these topics are and then deciding what I would do from there acting accordingly so yeah I think that's know. the best we can do I mean I generally feel very positive even like even when bad stuff happens I just feel like everything's moving forward like even humanity as a whole we're, we're progressing like we're, we're uncovering new things even like cryptocurrency like the idea of of money becoming universal like that is so if there's a good thing about this to me it's the idea that maybe one day like even like a universal language right that we mm. could all communicate together or at least understand each other right like if there was a way for that to be instantly translated with things like the uh, like the chip, yeah, uh, I or, think that's going to happen because they they said that the Google Pixel ear pods or whatever was supposed to translate live, but I don't know. Like I bought some, but, I bought them just for that. But, but the idea know, of any you know. all these different ways that humanity is coming together, right? Starting with the internet, and then obviously mm -hmm. travel is easier than ever. Not not with coronavirus, but in general before mm -hmm. that, uh, communicating is so fast, like. The, the trajectory seems to be humanity coming together mm -hmm. and being able to do stuff faster. And that seems like a good thing. Right. I agree. I agree. All right. So we got to wrap it up. We got a short one today. But let's hop back on tomorrow. I'm going to talk about the crypto, cryptocurrency. We've both been investing. Right. And it's been a huge plunge. Yep. But that's not the worst thing in the world. It's right. Actually kind of a good thing. Yeah. And we'll talk about on a, talk about that on the next episode. Yeah. And a few more things that we should tackle. All right, y'all. We out of here. Peace.